It goes without saying that when you pay your rates, you expect results. But for Alicia and Robert, that hasn't been the case. All they want is for council to fix their dodgy footpaths. But it seems even that is too hard. What the actual... I get stuck a lot. The state of the footpaths in this city are nothing short of disastrous. They don't really want to know about me. Alicia Matthews and Robert Perrin are not your typical TikTokers. Did you even know what TikTok was before this? No, it's gone crazy, yes. The social media phenomenon, most famous for lip syncing, has now become a platform for fed up wheelchair users. The support has been huge. Alicia Matthews started it off posting these videos about obstacles she faced in her hometown of Brisbane. Let's turn around, shall we? I've reported this footpath before. <laughs> and so, instead of fixing it, they painted a warning sign on it for me. I have a job, I'm raising a child, I'm running a home on my own, I'm trying to do all these things, but I have so many barriers every day. Every time I leave my home, there is a barrier that I have to face. We caught up with Alicia to discover firsthand how challenging her life can be thanks to bad footpaths. When I'm walking along this footpath, I see it very differently to you. What do you see along here? Danger. I've got to be really careful not to get too close to the edge and that makes it really hard if someone is coming the other direction and wants to pass me. That drop off on this footpath, that, I mean, that's quite severe for you, isn't it? Yeah, if I went off the edge there, I risk tipping the wheelchair or, or I get stuck and I can't get back on the path. Robert Perrin's issue is he doesn't even have a footpath in his street. It stops about 200 metres before his house. Watch how unbalanced his mobility scooter becomes when he simply tries to turn around. How hard is it for you not having any footpaths here? Mate, it's very hard, like the unevenness and unbalance. It's ridiculous. Naomi lives just up the road and demonstrates how bumpy that ride really is. Well, footpath would definitely be a lot more convenient because you come up here and you go out onto the road and you've got cars coming past and you've got, you know, you're playing dodgems. Oh, no. How do you feel when you have to go out there on the road and face the traffic? I'm oh, scared, mate, because you, like, you, you don't know what traffic coming, uh, coming down because of where all the cars are parking. Please don't die. Alicia's videos regularly capture her fear when she has to brave the traffic to get around an obstacle. Oh, God, this one's just as bad. This Hendra intersection proved impossible. The angle so steep, her chair became stuck. So, Alicia, how big of a problem is a footpath like this for you? I can't do it. I'm stuck. It's impossible. I am scared one day I'm going to die <laughs> trying to cross the road. Oh, just trying not to die. Oh, sh <sighs> How did you feel that day you came here and got stuck? So many things, you know, frustrated, Embarrassed because people are stopping and, and they want to help, but you can't. You can't push a power chair. She also became stuck on a nearby driveway, eventually having to reverse her way to safety. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Getting invited to go out anywhere is terrifying for me. I have to plan everything. Check Google Maps and I even use Street View to try and go along and, and check how many hazards I might be able to spot, but that's still not enough. Brisbane's uh, supposed to be a world city, but when you can't even walk around your, your suburb, you start to ask the question, what is going wrong in council? Jared Cassidy is the opposition leader of Brisbane City Council. He created a 20 metre long list highlighting the names of 1,114 streets in Brisbane awaiting repairs. So we've got um, over 6,000 streets that don't even have a concrete footpath at all, which makes getting around our city terribly difficult, not just for people who have mobility issues, but, but all people, whether they're young parents pushing prams or older people or young people trying to learn to ride a bike. 
A council spokesperson said in a statement it spent a record $40 million creating 274 new and reconstructed footpaths last financial year. Anna Campbell from community group Queensland Walks says that's not enough. Whatever we're spending now, which is very small amounts, we need to triple it and even Again, equal it please. to the amount that's invested in roads and other road-based infrastructure. You know, we're constantly told that people with disabilities are an economic burden, but we don't have the infrastructure in place to allow us to be independently productive. It's unbelievable, isn't it? And for its part, Council says the sections of footpath raised in those videos are earmarked for repair soon.